concluded in this way. Kenyans have a serious trust deficit with the Kenya Kwanzaa government, with Ruto and Gashagwa. They, they are saying, give us your money, we hold it for you for seven years, we construct houses somewhere, we give to the poor, and then in seven years, we'll give you back your money. And what Kenyans are asking is, can we trust you even with 100 shillings? So the question around 1%, 3%, I think those are exterior issues. The issue here is Kenyans are saying unequivocally that they cannot trust Ruto and his government with their savings for seven years, whether or not um, the houses will be constructed. If we move on to the issue of clinker, Clause 72 is proposing a 10% levy on clinker. Now, those who know anything about uh, the cement industry, clinker uh, composes 60 to 70% of cement today. Um, most of it is imported. Why? Because it's only two or three of our cement factories who have grinders to grind a stone that is called pulhamite that then creates clinker. Now, the question here is um, how Ruto is proposing to cure the issue of um, cost of contraction is upside down. Because if you raise um, importation taxes on uh, cement and on clinker, um, then what, what he is trying to tell us is that he is trying to uh, give impetus to the local producers of cement so that they can produce cheaper cement. But the truth is, this is a very expensive country to produce anything, whether you're producing a sweet, that sweet called patko, or a bag of cement. Our cost of production, which is majorly anchored on our cost of energy, is unbelievable. We are the most uncompetitive country in East African region. If you are, you are a manufacturer today, you better go off going to settle up in um, Rwanda and Tanzania than coming to Kenya. And the issue of energy is easy. And we want to say this to Ruto. And we can give, I mean, we can give him ideas if uh, our captain allowed us. But we are not here to consult for government. We are not paid by Ruto to consult for him. But this, if you read our manifesto, we had brought up the issue of greed losses in this country. This country is losing 23% of its power on greed losses. Now, let me put that in perspective. 23%, so it's about 0.25% uh, of the power that is produced in Kenya today is lost between production, reticulation, and the use, the end use customer. In the Azimio Manifesto, we had proposed to bring the greed losses down from 23% to 10%. Let me put that further into perspective. Every 1% drop on greed losses is 1.2 billion Kenya shillings. Every 1% drop on greed losses is 1.2 billion shillings saved that can be transferred to the end user. So it doesn't matter how much um, you know you raise the cost of uh, um, I mean you raise the cost of imports what the government should be doing is ensure that producing locally is competitive that that bag of cement can be produced locally at a cheaper price to match the global and the uh, East African market prices but this obnoxious government is doing the exact opposite the same is happening to iron rods and steel bars and craft. Let me spend some time on craft. Craft is the paper that drafts unga. I want to, I want to be like uh, my colleague, Honorable Bandi. I do not know what Ruto has with unga. Unga has been hit from left, right, and center. Whether it's VAT, whether it's the actual production of, um, um, of the maize plant in terms of fertilizer and inputs, whether it's the milling, that milling is being hit by, you know, the high cost of fuel, whether it's the transportation between the miller and the shop, the transportation costs, I think Baba has said that very clearly, the trucks that are transporting are now going to be paying 60,000 shillings as opposed to 20,000 shillings per ton, that, which was uh, what was going on. Now, unga, the, the paper that wraps unga usually is imported. This um, is a, there's a proposal 
to impose a 10% duty on that, on the wrapping paper. So who will bear these costs? It is you and I who are the consumers of UNGA. Once again,